Mark is basically saying at the beginning of his gospel, get ready, something is about to happen. And this is kind of, oh my goodness, what's going on moment. And Mark says, actually what's going on is the fulfillment of a very, very long story. It's now all happening. And it's one of those moments where something you've always dreamed of, that job you were uh, longing to do, finally you get the chance to do it. This is the moment. Or people have been longing to get married and then suddenly the day arrives. This is it. It's that sort of feel that we get at the beginning of Mark's Gospel. This is where the good news starts. Up until now we've been waiting, but now we've got the good news of Jesus the Messiah, God's Son. And who is it that we're waiting for? Well, uh, Mark quotes from Isaiah and Malachi and he quotes uh, the passages which are about, in retrospect, John the Baptist, somebody who's coming to get ready the way for the one who is to come. So we've got a two-stage getting ready, and first it's John the Baptist, and then it's, well, as we read the story, it's Jesus. But in those passages from Malachi and from Isaiah, it isn't a human being, or so we think. It's God himself, the God who has apparently abandoned his people all those years before, who has now promised that he's going to come back. And one of the crucial things about the expectation of Jews of that day is that they were longing for God to come back, but they didn't know what it would look like when he did. And Mark has opened his gospel in such a way as to say, this is what it looks like. And we watch, the story goes on, and we see Jesus. We see Jesus getting baptised by John in the Jordan. And as that happens, the heavens are opened. In technical language, this is an apocalyptic moment, a moment when the, the great curtain that separates heaven and earth is ripped aside, and suddenly a much fuller reality is revealed. And it's a reality in which great prophecies come true at last. And those words in Isaiah 42, behold my servant in whom I delight. And that verse in Psalm 2, you are my son, this day have I begotten you. These all come together and we see that though we hadn't ever imagined it would be like this, this is how the prophecies are going to be fulfilled and it's all through Jesus. And in those passages from Isaiah and from the psalm, it's clear that we're not talking about a God who comes back merely to give people spiritual comfort, though that will happen as well. It's about God taking his power and claiming his rights as sovereign over the world, over the nations. You might want to read Psalm 2 or Isaiah 42 as a whole, and you'll see this is about God becoming king over all the nations and kingdoms of the earth. And somehow Mark is saying, as you read this story, as you prepare for the whole of this gospel, that's what we have to be thinking. This is how God becomes king in and through Jesus. And so it goes on. Jesus goes off into the desert to be apparently tested, to be there with the wild beasts. And then he comes back and starts calling followers. This is the beginning of a movement. And it reminds me of that time at the beginning of, near the beginning of the book of Genesis, when God calls Abraham and then he calls Isaac and then he calls Jacob. There's a sense of this is the start of a renewed people of God. So as we prepare, the word comes to us. Are we part of this people? Are we going to be following? Are we going to learn from Jesus and look at him and see what his kingdom is going to be all about? That's the challenge we face this Lent.